Hi, everybody. This is Renee. And this is Kim from Round Trip. So if you love travel as much as we love travel, you should listen to the Round Trip podcast on the Rogue Intel Podcast Network. Or check us out on iTunes at Round Trip with Renee and Kim. You want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the powerful Nerdcast. It is 2017. It is a glorious time to be alive. We're about to get a brand new president, and both Christian and I are here for your viewing pleasure. Christian, how are you doing today? I am great. I'm excited to be back. Uh, This feels like this is our first podcast of 2017. It's good. It's good to be back. That's right. And we got a lot of awesome topics to talk about today. We have some cool brand new movie trailers we want to talk about. One of them being the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers reboot. A brand new trailer for the upcoming Logan movie. That's the Wolverine X-23 film. We also have the big reveal of the Nintendo Switch, which has already been sold out everywhere, as well as a few other surprises. But first, we actually have a viewer question. Okay, I'm excited about this. Yes, and it's a very simple one, but it's one uh, that I think we can both uh, talk about a little bit because we're both Naruto fans, isn't that right? That is true. That's how the channel started on our YouTube channel. That is correct. And, uh, you know, we we both have a lot of things we like about the series, but uh, this question today comes from Hawk Nolan, and he wanted to ask both of us, what are your favorite Naruto arcs? And why, Christian? I have the answer to that immediately. Go it's ahead. definitely the pain arc, hands down. The That's pain to me. Arc. This to me when the series changed in serious level, you know, like hardcore. We've seen mm-hmm. people die. We'd seen. We'd never seen like a whole village wiped out at once. We'd never seen Naruto's way of life just be altered all at once. You know, and we'd never seen Naruto get pushed so hard. So to me, hands down, that has to be it. Did you have like any favorite scenes from the pain arc? Any favorite battles? Because there were a lot. There were a lot. Like to me, that was like a war arc, you know, and like the way in some ways uh, a preview to the war arcs to come, you know, because it just involved the uh, Leaf Village and not like all the other villages all at once. But the Kakashi pain fight was great. Um, I did not care about the uh, Kimu Kimimaru. Pain fight. <laughs> you mean Konohamaru? Konohamaru, whatever his Konohamaru. name is. Konohamaru. Yeah, his his uh his fight was just okay. And it wasn't even so much a fight as it was just him sort of like hanging out in a dark alley, just waiting for his time to hit a dude with a Rasengan. Yeah, and then for some reason it worked, and I was yeah. like, "What? Isn't this supposed <laughs> to be a badass dude? What mm-hmm. the fuck is going on here?" So there was that. Um, then uh, what other parts I really like? I just thought the progression. Of the fight, you know, with them having transformations and Pain having to fight, you know, Naruto as he changed, it felt like an old school DBZ fight for me. So I think that's probably why I relate to it so well. Mm -hmm. I do agree. It was kind of a turning point for the series. Like it kind of felt like that Super Saiyan moment because that's when uh, Naruto just mastered Sage Mode. And uh, it was basically the first time we got to see it in action. And there was so much build up to it. And I even remember like when we were reading that for the first time in the manga, there was a feeling to it like the pain arc was kind of like this could be the final arc of the series and they could end it here and it would still be somewhat satisfying. There There was a lot of finality to it, especially just for how ridiculously overpowered pain was and the fact that that you had to fight against all of the paths of pain made it all the more destructive. I think the anime version did a great job of just displaying how destructive they were, utilizing all of their special abilities, some of them having like puppet bodies, some of them specializing in summoning, others that could rip out your freaking soul. But yeah, definitely that big battle with Sage uh, Naruto I think was really amazing. His entrance I think is one of the coolest things in the entire series. And, and of course it's that big crucial moment where he uh, goes six tails and just goes completely insane, which which leads to, I still think, is one of the, the best anime episodes of the series. So, yeah, I agree. It's definitely one of the best arcs. Yeah, I think it just overall set the bar for how big this series needed to be for the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to me, it's just one of the most emotional arcs. You know, you actually felt like the village might be done for. You felt like Kakashi might be dead. You know, mm-hmm. like there was just a lot of shit going on. So for me, that is like the, that's also like the fight I recommend people watch, you know, like if they have like, if they want to watch a few episodes of Naruto, 
I represent the. Uh, I always uh, recommend the pain fight. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to move. Despite the fact that it is incredibly controversial, but again, I guess you could, you know, if you don't like the anime version, you could just read the manga version. They're both entertaining. Yeah, they're both really good. Okay, what about you? Your favorite arc? Um, we we definitely have something in common. We like seeing arcs where Konoha Village just gets completely wrecked. Um, my favorite arc from the series is from before the time skip. It is the Chunin Exam arc. Which are you is, going old school? Yes, we are going old school. This this is kind of the arc that really like solidified my love for Naruto is when I started to get kind of obsessed with it, you know, and uh, what I love most about it is just, again, how it starts out as sort of like this small little exam where it just seems kind of like just another coming of age story, getting to see the characters grow a little bit, and it somehow turns into this massive convoluted plot of Orochimaru teaming up with the Sand Village to try and destroy Konoha Village to assassinate the Kage, and like this basically, this big massive war just starts in the middle of Konoha Village with massive monsters and snakes and Jiraiya appearing for the first time, and it all culminates with Naruto making his way through the tournament, fighting against people, proving himself to everyone, and then having this epic like battle against another Jinchuriki, which was Gara, and that whole final battle where he like summons Gamabunta for the first time against him, and Gamabunta transforms into Karama to fight against the giant Shukaku. Just so many crazy things going on in that arc. Not to mention the whole thing with Orochimaru fighting against uh, the uh, the original Hokage there, and actually like resurrecting some of the old ones to fight against him there was just a lot of epicness which was basically injected into the series at that time which you know naruto started out kind of slow basically just sort of your average action adventure series with ninja and then it transformed into something entirely different in that and to put the cherry on top of the Sunday. as soon as the arc was done, they waste zero time in introducing Itachi and Kisame into the series, uh, which are the Akatsuki, which ultimately become one of the most important parts of the series. So for me, it, it was the real turning point of the series. This is when things started to get serious. It was also when Sasuke finally started to, like, basically not like what Naruto was becoming because he felt he was sort of stealing his thunder and not allowing him to become the strong, dark, brooding badass that he could be. He felt like Naruto was weakening him during that time. Not to mention there are just way too many fights to talk about. I mean, just the exam portion alone, there are so many epic moments. Rock Lee versus Gara, Naruto versus Kiba, uh, freaking Sasuke going up against Gara. Just there are so many moments from There's that so arc. many. I felt like that arc uh, really set the tone for the whole series in it a lot did. of way yeah you know you're like oh this is what these characters can do this is what the battle systems will be like and uh a lot of team battles you mm -hmm. know a lot of like teamwork you kind of see mixed in there and uh that's also what made me so sad when that new tuning exam filler came up yeah it just wasn't as good no there was no way that they were going to be able to top that uh, you know especially because they couldn't get away with it without like sort of like copying it a little bit because it's like yeah we have a tuning exam but the whole reason the naruto tuning exam arc went so well is because it started out as an exam and it evolved into this massive conflict between multiple villages there was just so much more to it and it was also when we were first starting to get introduced to a lot of the side characters in naruto like a lot of the ones that are really classic at this point like shikamaru choji and ino rock lee was introduced for the first time neji and Bushy Ten Ten. exactly like there were just there were so many moments and things to get attached to and i remember like when i was watching that arc for the first time i was watching it with my good friend ben and this was back when we used to watch the shit like on a computer screen and uh like we just marathoned the hell out of that arc like once we got our momentum going we just we didn't want to stop we just wanted to keep going and see how far this would go and it was a massive arc and it totally had a lot of payoff and like you said it sort of like paved the way for the rest of the series and i do like a lot of arcs in the uh, the time skip as well um but like in terms of just like what really got me into the series an arc that i can rewatch over and over and over it has to be the classic tuning exam it's definitely a good one and uh i just you know, I just like the more grown-up Naruto more, so I think that's why I still like the pain arc more than that, but mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's definitely a great arc to get started in, and is the beginning of the series in a lot of ways, so not that crazy mm -hmm. to uh, uh, like that one. It's probably what got most people into Naruto. I'd be willing to bet it is, too. I mean, the Zabuza arc was really cool at the beginning and everything, but, like, the the Chunin exam created this, like, this scale and this scope that you didn't think was possible in a series like that. And I think it got people who were, like, really into Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho and One Piece. Like, they're like, oh, Naruto is a contender. We've got to check this shit out. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. And, so, it's, and the other thing is Naruto is kind of different because they, they rely on teamwork a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you look at like Dragon Ball Z, like they never fight together, mm -hmm. but like Naruto is all about that mm -hmm. bleach, you know, maybe do they fight together? What was that show? Where, they do fight uh, in wait. Do they, do they fight together in the show? That's about food. The other Shonen show. In Toriko? Yeah. Um, not, no, not it's just, too, it's just I mean, every character shows bit. up and then does their biggest attack and then hopefully it works out. Basically, yeah. I mean, it's it's like, is that what they do in Fairy Tale as well? Uh, yeah, they don't really do team attacks. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that they do like heavily praise the power of friendship. Yeah, well, let me defend my friends, but that's yeah. about it. You know, <laughs> that's all about all they do, you know. Uh, and kill me, I have tried to get into Fairy Tale, but I just, I can't. You're not missing anything. You're it's really a shame, not. too, because the characters and everything look so cool and fun, but like... Uh, you know, I look up a lot of the fight scenes and stuff on YouTube. I'm like, that's kind of unimpressive. I don't know. Like, th there hasn't really been anything that's completely blown me away from that series. I can understand why people are fans of it. You know, a series I don't think needs to heavily rely on its action to be a success. I mean, I think the characters can also carry a show. But I was just, I was waiting for that moment to completely wow me. And it never really came. Um, but but I don't necessarily hate Fairy Tale either. No, it's uh, it's it, fairy tale is an acquired taste, and it has a lot of crap in it too. Let me be mm. very honest about that. It's it's just okay, you know, like it's it's nothing to write home about. I'm sure some people are going to get pissed about that, but probably too bad. You got good fan service, I guess you got that going for you. But in the anime world, and manga world, that's kind of a dime a dozen. So, and then you, you get show 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 or whatever that dumbass show is that you like. Oh, you mean Keijo? Keijo. Keijo. Keijo is awesome, dude. That's fucked up. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, it's dumb. It's really dumb, but it's fun. Well, you can go take your dumb show and like yeah. all you want. I mean, it's no tuning exam from Naruto. Let's put it that way. Um, but there it is. That was our viewer question of the week. Hawk, Nolan, thank you very much for that one. If you guys have any other questions, please let us know. And they could be about anything. It could be about anime, movies, comic books. You know, what are if we like crunchy or smooth peanut butter, we don't really give a shit. Just... Just Give us some viewer questions. That's right. But let's go ahead and move on to movie trailer world because it seems like there's a brand new trailer every week for some sort of big movie that's being promoted. Oh, yeah. And first up, let's just go ahead and talk about the Power Rangers trailer. This is probably do, 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 our do, do. very first good look at what this movie is going to be all about, like seeing the Rangers this in their doesn't costume. Feel, yeah, this doesn't feel like a... Um, like a preview anymore mm -mm. this actually feels like the real deal mm -hmm. you know so that's that's interesting that they really actually let this go out yeah oh man i'm actually watching an ad right now to watch this trailer again it's for that new uh lemony snickets unfortunate events or whatever that fucking with, uh, with the mph yeah playing the, the, main, the main lead i haven't heard anything bad about it but i also haven't heard anything good about it yet i gotta <laughs> check that out okay All so right. we got some just you know some teenagers going through high school you know <laughs> That sounds innovative. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's just a straight introduction to the uh, the Rangers themselves, how they get their powers, which, of course, is a little different from the original interpretation, which we have to remember that this is an adaptation of an American show that was also an adaptation of a Japanese show, so they can pretty much do whatever the hell they want. We have our, we've already got race jokes in the first yeah. 30 seconds of the, 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 the Power Rangers trailer because the, uh, the, the one of the Rangers, like they see how like they have their all distinctive colors, and one of them's like, Hey, I'm black. I'm black. And of course, the black guy's like, "Man, you ain't black." So you ain't black. It's already making things pretty awkward. Um, something that is a little strange because, like, in the original Power Rangers, um, they only really had their powers when they were transformed, like when they had their uniforms and everything on, the masks, the the whole nylon jumpsuit, which for some odd reason could have sparks fly from it. Like, they, they didn't like have the superpowers when they were like regular humans. I mean, they had like martial arts capabilities. But that but was the, it. But that's because they were martial artists, you know. For the most part, yeah. There, there like, were you know a lot of them did train in that. Like you know there was there was Jason and uh, Tommy. Like they were avid martial artists. Uh, yeah. Zach was actually a dancer, but he also had the ability to fight as well. Billy was just a fucking loser. Is that the blue one? <laughs> yes. The nerd. Uh, at first, he was. I mean, he learned to fight. Uh, Trini was. Uh, you know, I don't remember what the hell Trini did. Kimberly was a gym uh, gymnastics, so she, you know, she was flexible. Yep. But uh, really, though, it, it was basically Jason and Tommy who did most of the fighting and probably trained them how to fight most of the time. But here, they're all just like they they get zapped with shit and they're they're super powerful. But this trailer is cool because we get our very first look at the command center as well as Zordon, which. 
is being played by Brian Cranston, and unlike the original show where he was basically just a head in a tube, here he's like this weird face that's he's like, like a head in a screen. Yeah, he's a head in a screen. And it's like, I don't know what that toy was called back in the day. We were talking about it earlier, like those ones with the little pieces of metal where you could like put your hand on it and it would show the imprint of your it hand. It had those little pins. Face. Yeah. Yeah, the little metal pins. And that's kind of what it reminds me of, just like on a more grander scale. And you can even see like when you see Zordon's face. There it is. You're actually looking them up right now. Yeah, let's see what it's um, called. The Toy Smith Classic Pin Art. Yeah. 3D relief. That's basically what they are. And that's that's what it kind of reminds me of for Zordon. And it's just basically Brian Cranston's face with Brian Cranston's voice. They're not like even trying to change it. Now that could change in the final version. It wouldn't be the first time that trailers uh, didn't do this, like where we didn't get like the final sound design put in the trailer. Yeah. We also get our very first look at Alpha 5, who, you know, probably of all the things I've seen from this movie, he's the most inoffensive thing. I mean, it's just, it's a little cute robot dude, but he's voiced by Bill Hader, you know, who's been voicing a lot of freaking robots lately, but I, I love Bill Hader. I think he's a funny guy. He's got to be one of the most highest paid people in this movie, though, which is insane considering he's basically a CG robot. Yeah, he just did voiceover. Now, we have this shot of all of these, like, rock monsters which are coming out. Are these supposed to be the Putty Patrol? No, these are, I guess, they're they're like the Sentinels. They're what they train against, because it looks I'm, like they, uh, they're they still in the... Um, uh, spaceship area mm-hmm. and maybe Zordon's training them, mm-hmm. you know? They also can climb up rocks and make out. Yeah, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and fight on top of trains and all types of other crazy shit. Now, these guys have to be the putties. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, there's Who scene, is that? That's uh, the actress. Yeah. Uh, playing Rita Repulsa, which, God, that name is fun to say. Doesn't that look um, like uh, what the is chick her- from Hunger Games? <laughs> it's not Jennifer Lawrence. It's, um, here. Not, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the, her, her, like, person that recruited her um you know who i'm talking about i'm not sure i mean well the actress's name is elizabeth banks okay let me um, look this up which i'm not sure if she was in the hunger games you know i'm not really a hunger games fanatic i I, I watched the first one very full you might be right though dude she was in uh she was in at least one of them her name was effie trinket is the name of the character yes it is that is her elizabeth banks i knew it it's rita repulsa um, which is, you know, I never finished those movies. I guess she was kind of considered like an antagonist. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Oh, she was in 40 year old virgin. Oh, yeah. she, was, she was, she was the one who, uh, worked at the store next to his. Yeah. She, and she was also the one who played with her, uh, little water spigot in the bathtub. Well, <laughs> the worst Steve Krell's like, I don't know about you guys, but she is fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, making it work, you know? But yeah, if anything, Elizabeth Banks is making uh, a good career for herself in terms of, you know, financial stuff. But Not, uh, not good acting. She, not really. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could argue she was good in the Hunger Games for the characters she played, but she seems to love playing these crazy makeup characters now. Now, here's, here's a shot of her, like, going insane and really crazy, and she's wearing clothes that she doesn't usually wear throughout most of the uh, the trailer where she's got like this green look to her, which a lot of people have theorized that she has the stolen power of the Green Ranger. That's why she's like covered in green and emerald and all this other shit. Okay, that's actually a cool theory. Which I'm would be down an interesting that. twist, and it would also tie into the original series because Rita did create the Green Ranger with this like mystical item, which was called like the, the, the Green Candle. And, and it was somehow tied uh, to the Green Ranger's power. So in a way, they are sort of like redoing that and kind of like sort of you know doing their own interpretation of that but throughout the trailer you get to see her like walking down this like city street and all of these like rock monsters are coming up out of the ground and i guess that's the putty patrol which i didn't expect them to be so heavy on the cg with them um it's not surprising um but they're very different from the putty patrol that we remember from the original show which Really weren't all that threatening. And they were just dudes in like you know those green morph suits you see. They're like in gray morph suits with a with a helmet on or like yeah. a face mask. <laughs> and and they, that was they, it. You know they made those goofy like <laughs> like noises when they were fighting, which they don't appear to be making any noise like that uh, in this trailer at all. And the net, one of the coolest parts is when they morph for the first time. You the, know? The, they do the slow walk, they the Armageddon the slow, slow walk. walk. They, they do the, the, the jump down and the pose, which I'm not going to lie. That like that moment kind of reminds me of Sentai, but I do have... Here's the biggest problem. Yeah. Right there. Yep. 
they love to not have their fucking masks on. That fucking pisses me off. I, they're, I they're morphed, but yet they still show their faces. What is the freaking point of morphing and transforming into a Power Ranger if you're constantly going to show your face for everyone to see? This is a problem that Hollywood has with superhero movies, is they are afraid. They are deathly afraid to show characters who are in costume in their costume for too long because they're, they're the way they think about it is like we got this actor who's really big we want people to see them we want them to see their face but people who go to these movies don't want to see that shit they want to see their favorite characters in action you go back and you watch the old spider-man movies the uh, the sam raimi trilogy 90 percent of those movies is fucking just toby mcguire wearing a spider-man suit from the neck down and it's annoying as shit i don't want to see that i want to see my fucking favorite character it's it's decisions like that that lead to the fact that we don't have a single x-men movie with wolverine in his costume nope. ever never even coming close to wearing his mask or his original costume and, and i hate that decision i mean hell they're in the freaking zords just put on the damn mask and there are some shots of them wearing the helmets and the mask and everything in the trailer but Damn, that just disappoints me that we have to see their faces so much. Yeah. And I have nothing, you know, against seeing their faces. It's just we spend 99% of the movie seeing them. I want to see the Rangers being the freaking Rangers. Now, with that in mind, we also get our very first look at the Zords, which look okay. I mean, you know, aside from a few color cues, they all look like just giant orgies of fucking metal. They look mm -hmm. like the, the Bay Transformers. They have very Bay Transformer-esque look. You yeah. Know? I also have to admit, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a super Power Rangers fan. Like, I don't, like, follow it religiously or anything. I, I just, I watched the show when I was a kid, and I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Um, this big monster that they're fighting against, this giant gold creature, it has been confirmed that that monster is the character of Goldar from the original Power Rangers Oh, the Rangers dog series. guardian thing? Yes, the, like, the, uh, the kind of griffin kind of design creature with yeah. the golden armor. And, wow, he does not even resemble himself at all. They basically took the name and kind of You know what it, it looks like to me? Mm. The Day After Tomorrow's monster? The Day After... Oh, kind of like... Uh, the Keanu Reeves faceless thing that just shoots laser beams out oh, of Oh, okay. Face. I think you mean uh, Gort the robot? Yeah. Yeah. It's dumb looking. Which just like we, that one. You do know that that's a remake, right? I know. Okay, I know. cool. But uh, the, <laughs> the, new version, you know. the new version was it was like a robot, mm -hmm. and then it could like pull itself apart into little like tiny robots, and mm -hmm. it would rebuild itself, and then shoot laser beams, and it was just very... It's kind of like the future Sentinels from uh, Days of Future Past. Very right? much like that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, Goldar is like, it, it literally looks like he's kind of like a super putty, except that he's made out of like gold. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be devoid of personality as far as I can tell. But it's a shame that they took a character like that and kind of basically transformed him into a mindless monster, which I thought he had a lot of personality. And uh, he was one of my favorite characters from the original Power Rangers. And I just, I always loved the design of him. But I mean, his general design, I guess, is still kind of there in the sense that he's covered in gold and he has big wings. But. That's about it, but, you know, again, he doesn't have any dialogue in the trailer. We don't know if he actually talks or anything or why he's there. All that's there is basically just to let us know that, yes, we are going to have a giant monster battle. We get to see the Megazord for the very first time, which they've teased for a couple of months by releasing images of, like, the toys of it and everything, but, like, I'm still not really sold on the overall design of it. Again, all the robots in the movie just look like Bayformers. How excited about this movie are you from 1 to 10? Before, I was, like, I was a solid 8. Now I'm kind of like a 6. I have to completely agree. I The more I see, the more I'm like, they're missing the mark on this. And I hate to be some elitist fan, you know, trying to get all high and mighty that they're not doing it right. Yeah. But damn it, it doesn't feel quite like Power Rangers to me. Yeah. And where the fuck are Bulk and Skull? Oh, yeah. They'll be in there. <laughs> I doubt it. They're yeah, such a relic of the 90s. The old school greaser villains who like hold up people for their lunch money. Have you ever seen anyone do that? Give me your lunch money. Well, now Pushing it's impossible. The, the... Well, here's my debit card, I guess, because that's I guess. all I got. But I'll, I'll probably just cancel it before you can use it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's... I don't know. Again, though, like we could be jumping the gun. For all we know, this could end up being just a really fun movie. You know, clearly it's not made for our demographic i mean i think there's a lot of nostalgia attached to it i mean that's the reason that they're making it in the first place but i just i don't know they're it's not just... making it 
they're remaking it, Corey. Yeah, they're remaking it. Sorry. I need, I need to remember, this is a reboot, so you can kind of take it or leave it, and even if it was a continuation, you could leave it as well, but... You know, it, Power Rangers was a really important part of my childhood. It was sort of my first introduction to the ridiculousness of Japanese entertainment. Um, it's sort of like what helped me or wean me into that type of stuff. But, uh, you know, there are elements of it here, but it just, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. It could be a, just a dumb, fun movie. I mean, it could, or it could be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Michael Bay. We'll have to see. It is being made by the people who've been producing Power Rangers for years, so who knows? They, this could be really fun. But It may be right, and I, just, I may be wrong. But I'm still not super happy with what I'm seeing, but, you know, who knows? The kids might love it. We'll have to see. Um, but at least we have a more solid trailer giving us a firmer understanding of it, and, you know... It was cool to see Brian Cranston, even though it does seem like he's kind of phoning it in in terms of what he's doing with his voice and stuff. But that's probably my favorite shot of those, like, five seconds right there that you just saw when they uh, when they do the slow walk and then they uh, jump down and then this and then the Blue Ranger kicks like a monster. That was the one part I was like, okay, feels like Power Rangers. And then we see the chick who has her visor missing on her Power Rangers helmet. I'm like, okay, I'm angry now. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that so much. Um, no, I don't get it either. It yeah. makes no sense. I'm also really interested to see how the Japanese audience is going to uh, react to this because, you know, it's it's not the Super Sentai that they watch, but it is an interpretation of what they watch. So I'm interested to get their feedback on it if they think it just looks terrible or if it's something that they'd be really excited to see because even now the Super Sentai series is still going strong in Japan. There's like a new iteration like every year to two years. And they still basically are doing the same thing that they've always done. It's still pretty much the same suits. The monsters still look ridiculous and rubbery and the, the, the robots still look big and blocky. They haven't really changed much of anything. They still use a little bit of CG, but that's pretty much it. So another trailer that's come out is Nut Job 2, Corey. There was a Nut Job 1. <laughs> <laughs> I, can they really get away with calling a movie nut job for kids i don't know it's better better than the rim job series well i, I don't think this is for us <laughs> like i said i don't even think there was i didn't even know there was a first one i'm kidding the actual other trailer we want to talk about is logan 2 logan 2 otherwise known as x23 fucking people up so it's pretty much just a kid walking around a convenience store taking stuff not paying for it and this guy's like yo you gotta pay for that and then she almost kicks his ass and kills him. Looks like a really strained Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah. Oh, nope, that's not going to work. Boom! And she fucking whips his ass and is about to stab him in the face. Luckily, fucking Wolverine pops in. Steal some more shit. Yep. You know? I mean, might as well. Let's get some fucking jerky for the road, man. That's why we're here. So this trailer is, uh, you know, tonally, I think, a lot different from the last one. It wasn't. It well, the la The first one was like just uh wolverine walking around with sad music playing basically yeah what was it this johnny, johnny cash's uh hurt. version of the nine inch uh nail song yeah yeah which is the last wasn't that like the last song johnny cash made before he died i'm not sure don't quote me on that but it was definitely one of the last it was i thought it was the most heavily publicized songs right before mm -hmm. he died um anyway it's a good song yeah um but it was just sad music and images pretty much with a little slight bit of storytelling in mm -hmm. there. But this is very much the story. You can tell what's going to happen. Yeah. You can tell there's Charles Xavier. You can tell everyone's here. Mm -hmm. And then I like that little shot though, where uh, Logan is talking to professor X and X 23 is there. And uh, he's looking at this comic book, which kind of looks like within the, the story of this universe, like people actually like made a comic version of the mutants uh -huh. Like, without their permission or something. And there's a couple of shots of the comic, and you get to see, like, a version of Wolverine wearing, like, a variation of his classic costume and everything. I guess that's about as close as we're ever going to get to seeing uh, Wolverine in the costume in these movies. But then we finally get to see X-23 in action, which is just... I have to say, it's pretty damn cool. With this her is like a much more, intense of, uh, much more intense version of... Uh, uh, what was that? Never mind. I forgot the name of that show. It was the movie. Um, Eternal... No, no, I'm fucking this whole thing up. Never mind. It's that Sunshine movie where they all go on. Eternal under... Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Nope, that's the Jim Carrey one. I'll have to look this up. I Sorry. was about to say, what is the... Int... <laughs> that is nothing to do with that. No, I but was anyway, going to say, like, what is the connection here? So we got the cool... This is this thing you see a lot, this shaky shot. You see this shaky shot where everything's yeah. shaky? We see that in a lot of films now. Mm -hmm. It's like at uh, 143. It's not, And it's not like the, the shaky cam. It's like the... 
It's the, like a reverberation. Yeah, it's like you see like an energy getting pushed off the character. Mm-hmm. So it's just Logan trying to save his clone daughter, not real yeah, daughter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure X-23 is basically a straight clone of him, but they kind of like insinuate that that's basically his daughter the way he kind of sees it. I mean, if it's a baby child that's you, you know, it's it, yeah. it has a lot of the traits of a real biological mm-hmm. version, yeah. you know, so. And it seems like they're kind of staying true to, like, what her powers are. Like, she has the, the two claws in each hand, um, but I think she also has a single claw on each foot. Really? Yeah, like it actually comes out of her freaking foot. Don't quote me on that. The only reason I say that is because I remember it from uh, Marvel vs. Capcom where she was a playable character and she totally had those on her feet. Um, maybe they were just a part of her costume, but maybe she can actually like retract them, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, tonally it's, it's just very different from the first trailer, um, but still sort of carrying with it, you know, a little more maturity when compared, I think, to some of What's the other What's that last line? Movies. I bet that last line's funny. I want to turn this it up. It probably is. You know, I actually didn't watch that part in the Yeah, show. me either. I want to see that real quick. Two days on the road, only one meal, and hardly any sleep. She's at like my fucking 19. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty funny. Well, they just wanted to remind us that this is a rated R movie. Um, and if you ever wanted to hear Professor X say, fuck, well, I guess Logan is the movie for you. I just don't understand why Wolverine doesn't just kill all those dudes when they come up for his kid. Like, how did he get knocked down to the ground and shit? I mean, maybe these guys he's going up against are pretty powerful. Maybe they, they understand really how to mutants. fight. You know, maybe they know how to fight mutants or yeah. they have, like, I mean, bullets. there are definitely shots of him fighting against them uh, throughout the trailer. But, like, like, in the beginning when they first introduced the bad guy, you mm-hmm. know, they just hit him with a gun real quick and hold him down. And I'm like, how the fuck do you do that to Wolverine? You know? Well, we have to remember, too, that this is old Logan. This old Logan. An, an older version of the character. His healing factor isn't as strong as it used to be. And, I mean, look, there's a ton of guys around here. Although, X-23 looks fucking pissed. Yeah. That scene where her, like, blades start to come out is pretty damn cool, though, I have to admit. It's it's kind of scary, too. Like, she fucks these guys up. Yeah. Like, she goes right for the jugular and everything. It looks like there's going to be a lot of wire work in the movie as well. When the hell does this come out? Um, I am not sure. Let's see here. It's, uh, it's just called Logan, correct? Logan. Yeah, Logan. Which, you know, I, I guess they're trying to go the whole Rocky Balboa route with that one. Uh, let's see. Logan is going to be released in theaters very soon on March 3rd. Guess what? That comes out the same day as Breath of the Wild. Not seeing it. Nope. Sorry. Probably won't see it for at least a week. A week? Yeah. Because you're going to be so engrossed in your fake pig fighting game. Yeah. Wait, what? Because that's all you do in Breath of the Wild is fight pig people. You don't fight just pig people. You fight <laughs> lizard people. And, and then stronger pig and people. stronger pig people. <laughs> and then pig people with swords. And you fucking loser. They're called bokoblins. And uh, they're pig people, Corey. <laughs> the pig people. The pig people. So, yeah. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it sounds like South Park shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, I am excited for Logan, though. I mean, it's definitely the most excited I've been, aside from Deadpool, which is, I guess you could call it its own thing, like X-Men movie-wise, it can't be any worse than Apocalypse. God, I wish, I wish, I really wished Deadpool could make, like, a secret appearance in that upcoming Logan movie, but it's just not going to happen. I know. And it seems like it'd be perfect, because they're both rated R. Oh, so. dude, here's that app I showed you earlier. God dang it. <laughs> All right. Oh, Give man. Give more context behind this. Okay, question. so how do you pronounce that first? Uh, Meitu. Meitu. Meitu is, is an app that you can download uh, for Android and Apple. And what it does is it is a... <laughs> It's an app that like transforms your face into like an anime looking sort of like airbrushed character. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you know what a Snapchat filter is, it's kind of like that. But you can just make the creepiest photos like look at these photos uh, i know you guys can't see them because you're uh only listening uh norman Reedus with the um with the wind blowing his tears away oh my god <laughs> i don't know how to describe this but if you ever get a chance to try it just take a picture <laughs> of yourself and it blew up on the internet like three four days ago and uh i highly rem- <laughs> I like this guy's comment nope <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't I don't know. It's creepy as fuck. It's really weird. I'm looking at the it. picture you took of me earlier 
And it's just strange looking, man. I don't know. Maybe we'll include it in the podcast just for shits and giggles. Yeah, that should be a thumbnail. Because, I mean, no. <laughs> yes, I don't want to scare you guys away. <laughs> I look terrifying. Oh. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just, uh, it's not the background or anything. It's what they do to, like, your face. It's so subtle, too. Like, well, they it's airbrush mostly, your face. like, and, the, it's, and it's in the eyes, too. Oh, yeah. They make the eyes all big. They, they squeeze the face down and make the eyes bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it really weird. does kind of give it like an anime look, but it also makes you you're like, wow, that wouldn't fly in real life. Like that just wouldn't look cool at all. And it's just ugh, I don't like it. I don't know. I don't like looking at it. <laughs> it's disturbing me. Yeah, um, it's weird, but I'm glad that's I don't know there. why this shit's blown up. That that blew up everywhere yesterday. Like mm-hmm. even uh, here's a friend of mine. Don't say his name. I don't want to like uh, <laughs> okay. you know, turn the Internet towards him. But I want you to see this. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is going to be bad. I Try hope. it out on your friends, though. Get their reactions from it. There. Ah! <laughs> I don't like it! It's so unnatural. It's got like this... It turns something real into something Uncanny Valley-like. Yeah, and it uh, it makes you look like... Uh, uh, you know that woman that's a real-life Barbie doll? No. Real-life Barbie doll. This is going to be creepy, too, I the bet. The real-life Barbie girl. What? Um, oh boy! No, I'll just go on Google Images. Just type "real life Barbie" and you can see this woman. That's a wait. What? That's a human person. There's no way that's a human. A lot of plastic surgery. That is disturbing. A lot of plastic surgery there. Wow! It's 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 in the face. That oh yeah. Things really start to get kind of creepy there. Like it is like a freaking doll. I don't know if it's just the the pounds and pounds and layers of makeup. There's a lot of makeup, but there's also a lot of uh, of uh, like plastic surgery, in my opinion. Yeah. Like I mean, this lady. I mean, this bitch also has to go through some Photoshop like crazy. I mean, that's weird looking. Like her hips are just so wide compared to her body. That you know? is scary. Actually, it's it's not even really attractive. No, it's, it's weird. It's just it's kind of creepy looking. Like she looks like a. You ever seen those sex dolls called real dolls? Like she kind of looks like a fake. She looks se- like a just yeah, like a giant rubbery doll. Like a sexy, not sexy, but like sex doll person. I don't know how to describe that, and I I don't even mean to like. It's a fuck puppet. Yeah, she looks like a real life fuck fuck puppet. <laughs> Dude, Vice just put out a piece called um, "Male Sex Dolls for Women." And uh, the reporter at the end fucks one of them just to, uh, just to give you her opinion on it. Hopefully not on camera. It's done tastefully. Like, they don't show things. It's tasteful, though. It's you know, tasteful. The lighting was really nice. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's weird. Sex dolls are like a weird subculture. It's just a giant fucking dildo, isn't it? <laughs> I guess, <laughs> like, yeah. Really? But with a face and abs. It's, that's the only thing. But it's like, that's creepy, though. Look, I'm sure I could uh, mail sex doll. I, I don't. I would not want that on my search browser. I'm glad you're using it over there. Doll. Um, Vice. Oh, man. Yeah, you gotta see oh, this. Oh, no, Rick. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, see, that's her doing him. Okay. Anyway, uh, making the world's first male sex doll on Vice. Check it out. It's actually a really interesting piece. Vice has weird stuff, you know? That's an understatement. Like, like look at these people, like medically assisted sex for disabled people um how does that fucking work i guess someone just says oh i'll fuck some disabled guys that have never had uh, sex before what? or disabled women you know it's, it's really a nice thing to do if you think about it like imagine going your whole life and not knowing the touch of another human being besides your family you know like yeah it's but of, i mean like it's just, a sad life you know that's actually a really nice thing to do for someone i i suppose and it's, just, uh, it's weird the world of medically assisted sex yeah no inside the world yeah. that's a much better uh uh, uh provocative title <laughs> uh oh i've seen this one too the danger dangerous business of bdsm abduction fantasies oh, so yeah. people, people who want to get abducted and yeah, fucking raped whipped and shit yeah or whatever the fuck yeah. you want oh and then the, <laughs> that series <laughs> Oh, smokables. <laughs> smokables. What is that? It's a guy that just goes around and shows you how to make uh, weed pipes out of things in your house. Like, oh, he's the, he's the MacGyver smoker from Half Baked. Yeah, how to make a watermelon bong, how to make a cross joint, how to make a tulip joint, how to make a carrot. carrot. It's like, dude, just get me an avocado, an ice pick, <laughs> and my snorkeler. 
Come on, bro. I've made bongs with less. <laughs> That's a goddamn MacGyver. I swear you can't scroll halfway across Vice until you see you just see weed. Weeds. It's all it's all drugs, sex, people fighting, and animal videos. Yeah. That's vice. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. And, and and I don't see any action Bronson on here, but he's fucking great. Well, vice is so big now. It's like there's vice and then there's like the sub vice to the uh, the actual personalities, if you mm -hmm. will. You know, like there's so much. And look at all the different um, subcultures of vice there are. There's mm -hmm. munchies, vice land, um, noisy, vice mm -hmm. news, vice sports, motherboard, waypoint. I haven't seen any of their sports content. I'm kind of curious to check that out. Uh, I wonder what Vice Sports is even about, because it can't be like everything else. That no, they put out. If, if it's anything like the other programs they do, it has to be something that's at least slightly innovative or maybe something that's not as like strained. Yeah. You know, weird. I don't expect it to be like ESPN or Sports Center. That's anything. not what Vice does. No, no, they wouldn't have gotten a. Uh, you know, they wouldn't have gotten as far if they just did. Well, that. if it's anything, uh, if there's anything I can see, it looks like a lot of the sports they focus on is like not like traditional sports. Yeah, like here's a story on an 85 year old marathon runner. Like the first thing I'm seeing is like surfers and marathon runners and people like, fighting. They're, they're not like covering like you know the the football or you know any of the ball sports as Christian would say. Ball sports. So there's a lot going on yeah. here. Yeah. So I highly recommend. I don't know if you guys don't know about Vice. Shame on you, mm -hmm. you pieces of shit. Go check it out right now. <laughs> Is that how you talk to your audience? I'm not sure. No Damn one coached right. me on this. We got you guys by the balls. <laughs> it's true, though, right, Corey? I'm not wrong. If you don't know about Vice, you need to go see it right yeah, now. It, you know? it really is eye-opening, and I think they're doing great, really great things for journalism without like having to worry about censoring themselves. Like yeah. they, they say what they want. They get what they want. It's awesome. And their storytelling is compelling. Mm -hmm. And I don't think their camera work or everything else is all that amazing because they don't worry about that. They just worry about the story. Of, is the story being told? Mm -hmm. You know? So I think that that is uh, very interesting. You should definitely check out Vice if you haven't already. Yeah, I like that, though. It makes them kind of unpretentious, you know, because they, you know, uh, an outlet like that could come across as being like maybe too artsy. But they're like, no, we're here about the fucking we're here to get the story. Yeah, we're that's here, it. We're, we're here to inform you and show you how shit really is. We're not here to fucking, you know, blow your mind with some artsy bullshit. No artsy bullshit in this house. That's right. So one other thing I want to talk about today, which is definitely not new news, but it's it's been going on for like the last week, is uh, the big reveal of the Nintendo Switch, which is the brand new epic Nintendo system, which is going to be sort of like a home console and a hybrid uh, portable console altogether. And just last week, they had a really big presentation where they showed off the uh, launch date, the price of the system, some of the games that are going to re release with the system. And the very next day, they allowed people to start pre-ordering, and we both got up, and we both immediately went to GameStop and pre-ordered our Switches for very different reasons. I want one because I'm a Nintendo fan, and I want to play the brand new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild when it releases on March 3rd. You have bigger plans for your Nintendo Switch? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'm i going to resell mine. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just... <laughs> there, uh... You know, there are people who might think that's wrong, but there's really nothing wrong with that. I got up and pre-ordered it. it you could have gotten it. up and pre-ordered it too, okay? Mm -hmm. I waited in line, and at the end of the day, if you want it and you didn't pre-order it, you got to pay more if you want it the day it comes out. Mm -hmm. That's just the way... I, I hate saying that's the way free market works and all that dumbass shit, but whatever. I'm going to have one. You're not going to have one if you want it. It costs more. You know? <laughs> Simple as that. So and, I am uh, excited about it uh, uh, coming out, though, and I really wish I could play it for like a day or two and then sell it, but mm -hmm. I, I don't want to open the box. No, I wouldn't risk it. And I mean, I have the system, so I, I can let you play it. And, you know, worst comes worst, I can just bring the portable version over. Yeah. You know, and you'll be able to, like, try it out there. Um, you know, I thought it was a pretty decent uh, lineup of games that they do have coming out this year. Uh, it, it's it's a little bit of disappointment, but it's also a little bit of excitement, which, you know, I, I should expect from Nintendo at this point. That's, that seems to be my general consensus with them all the time is, man, that looks really fun, but boy, this really sucks because we always have to wait for shit to come out. Uh, but at least it is going to launch with a brand new uh, Zelda game, The Breath of the Wild, which just looks so damn awesome. Ugh, I mean, Zelda games alone are uh, pretty freaking legendary. I mean, I know that's kind of a stupid thing to say. It's in the damn title. Um, but, you know, the Legend of Zelda series has got to be, if not the most revolutionary game series next to Mario, the most revolutionary for how 
it basically changed the game. Like, it's not just about an arcade-style experience. It's about going on an adventure and exploring and interacting with people and finding secrets and doing things at your very own pace. Like, we wouldn't have games like Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim if we never had the original Legend of Zelda. And it's sort of come full circle at this point where now they're going to do, like, a big open-world sandbox-style game for the Legend of Zelda, Zelda that allows you to do what you want when you want to. And uh, what I love most about that, too, is that it's getting rid of a lot of the baggage of, like, the Legend of Zelda, where it was kind of a barrier for a lot of people because uh, people assume you have to play the old games to understand the story or the lore of the world. This game is going to make it so that a lot of people who don't play Zelda or have never played it before are going to be able to jump right in and have a really fun experience. You know, Christian, I know you like open world games a lot. Like, uh, you know, you liked, uh, what was the... Uh, I love Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, I, I literally can Theft sit Auto down Auto. and play that game for an hour any day. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't even need to do anything. Like, mm -hmm. I actually usually push through the main story as quickly as I can, just so I can get all the resources and unlock everything for all the characters. Because mm -hmm. money is actually very useful because you can buy cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I love the open world games that are done right. You know, mm -hmm. really do. What was the one you were playing that was like, it was like a primal like game where you ride oh, on the Oh, Far Cry stuff? Primal? Yeah, Far Cry Primal. Love and, that game. Uh, I don't know if you ever played the Skyrim games. Or... Never played those because they're a little too RPG-y for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, Well, that's the other good thing about The Legend of Zelda um, is a lot of people in the past have liked to classify it as an RPG, but you don't level up. You don't do anything like that. It's, it's basically about resource management. Um, that's not really RPG to me. What's RPG to me is like, you pick up a sword and it has like five slots and you like attach things to it, mm -hmm. you know, and your like skill level gets better the more you use it, you know, yeah. like that's kind of RPG -y to me. But picking up a better assault rifle than someone else and shooting them with it better does not classify as an RPG. It's just no. weapons have levels, you know, mm -hmm. that's just different. And another thing about this game is unlike a lot of the other Zelda games where you pretty much you had your sword, your shield and maybe a few other weapons here. You can get so many different weapons, axes, swords, bows and arrows, a broom, spears, all <laughs> types of stuff, and they break like over time. So you have to really like watch your inventory and make sure that nothing gets completely destroyed. Um, can you repair them? You, uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, there, there is a good chance. I'm sure there's like a smithy or someone you can go to who can like enhance the durability Did of you your say weapons. A smithy, smithy, not smithy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you mean a blacksmith? A blacksmith. Oh, yeah, okay. a smithy. Smithy. That's what they're called, the Smithy. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the, in this lore or in in no, in just in general. I think you're making that word up. I mean, there, no, there's a blacksmith and the, the, there's the Smithy. You can look it up. Okay. Smith E. I know that sounds weird, um, but it, but it is actually a thing. Um, look at these people. He's fighting the. Uh, he's fighting against these new enemies in the game, which are called the Guardians, which are basically like these giant sentient statues with like Doctor Octopus legs. That will like follow you relentlessly and fire these super powered like laser beams at you, which is something that's new for the series. It's also slightly reminiscent of the original Zelda game on Nintendo, which just like this game, just they throw you in and they're like, all right, explore, have fun, do what yeah. you want, which is something I really love because the last game that came out in the series, which was called Skyward Sword, was probably the most hand holding Zelda game that's ever existed. Man, the gameplay video you're watching, Link just got fucked. Oh, he, he, I would just recommend that you don't go in that area and don't fight those statues for a while, probably because mm -hmm. you have no reason to or no capability to yeah. kill them yet. You and know? Looking at this gameplay video we're watching right now, it's a link riding around on a horse. It seems like it's pretty early on in the game because he doesn't even have like a, a new costume or anything yet. It's kind of like what he starts out in the game. Um, but just man, the hype levels behind this game, man. I mean, it's... You know, man, I sat around yesterday and I was like, man, I'm kind of pumped about the Zelda game. I'm not going to lie. You know, it would be fun to play. Mm -hmm. And then all I said is, and I wish I would have bought two Switches because that way if I sold one mm -hmm. and like, let's, I think they retail for 300 Yeah. If I try to sell it for six, then I could have had a Switch for free because mm -hmm. that would have paid me back for the second one I bought. That is true. But I didn't buy two. Nope. Didn't have the funds. Yeah. Now, do you have any sort of history with the Zelda series? I haven't played Zelda at all. I played the original one on Nintendo, like, mm, maybe, like, for an hour. And wow. then I've and never... that must have been back in the day, too. Yeah. They were, it was boring to me, because I didn't understand what to do. Mm-hmm. 
that's kind of like that was my first experience with Zelda. It wasn't the original; it was the second one called Zelda Two uh-huh. on Nintendo. And uh, my brother had it, and I played it for like two hours. I remember when I was younger, and I was like, "This game is hard as shit. I don't know what to do. I don't want to know where to go. Where is Mario Brothers?" Yeah. So I sort of just gave up on it. But then when it started coming out on Super Nintendo, I started paying attention to the series, and that's when I became like a hardcore fan. And uh, now I, I, I'm not afraid to say I've played every single Legend of Zelda game in existence, and this one is just, it, oh, I cannot wait for it, man. I know. It, it's going to be the first big innovative one in a long time in a, lo- a lot of different ways. There's actually going to be voice acting in this game, which is nothing big for modern games nowadays, but for Zelda, it's pretty freaking huge just to have voice acting. It looks like it's mostly going to be in the cutscenes of the game and not so much like when you're going around the open world and talking to people, but... That's still a really big deal, and seeing people's reaction to that was probably one of my favorite things about the reveal uh, of the new Zelda game, because once you, when you watch people do the reactions to these games, the minute they start to hear that voice acting, they freak out. Like, it's a big deal for hardcore Zelda fans. Yeah, because to them, that's not what they do, mm-hmm. you know, and it, I It get seems that. like Link is still going to be silent, which, you know, he's the silent protagonist as always. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I hope that when they do eventually release a new Smash Brothers, I hope we get to see this version of Link as the new, like, Link that's playable in the game. I think that'd be I'll cool. be honest. I don't think this game looks that great. I think the style is very interesting, but I mm-hmm. think, like, the graphics themselves are not that impressive for some reason. I know Nintendo is not trying to play that game. I'm not trying to be like, oh, it doesn't look like modern games. But I do think uh, this game doesn't look that great. I disagree wholeheartedly. I think it looks fucking gorgeous. I've heard it doesn't look good when it's on TV, but it looked way better in the handheld system. You know, because, like... I mean, what looks bad about it, though? Oh! Uh... Like, I mean, aside from the fact that everything looks fucking beautiful and colorful. I think it looks, all the colors look too mushed together. It looks like a pastel barf. You know, I don't know. I'm not that into it. You know? Oh, man. I I so disagree with you on this one. That's fine. I just, I don't, I'm sure people will say the the same thing. Constant moving blades of grass and just. Yep. uh, I don't know. I think it, I think it's the best looking Zelda game, period. But I mean, you know, everybody wants Zelda to look like fucking Skyrim. I do not want Zelda to look like Skyrim. Zelda has always been stylistic and ki- had kind of like an influence from anime in its design. And you can definitely see that a lot in this brand new game. It, it kind of looks like a, a constant moving anime, which I am okay with. We'll see. Just I, I'm totally cool with the style. We'll I mean, see. I think I think time... I just don't think it's uh, all that pretty. I think it could have... I think it... No, no. Let me say that again. I think the art style is great. Mm-hmm. And the uh, concepts that they... You know, the the way they show things is cool. I just don't think the graphics are all that impressive, personally. Mm-hmm. But, you know, then again, that is not what Nintendo does. They don't play that game. No. You know, they don't play the specs game. It's also a giant freaking open world game, too. There have to be some limitations. Grand Theft Auto V didn't have any. This looks just as good as Grand Theft Auto V, in my opinion. I don't see any assault But they're different art styles. That's the thing, though. But I think, like, the animations of the characters and, like, the overall design, I think it's on par. We shall see. We shall see. And on that, Corey, I think we should wrap this bad boy up. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Uh, But, yeah, that's just uh, our podcast for today. We just wanted to talk a little bit about the Switch. We didn't have a chance to talk about Super Mario Odyssey, but maybe next time. Uh, We do appreciate you guys. uh, Mario hits the big city. That's right. GTA Mario, it's going to happen eventually. And this time... Something, something. It's personal. Yeah, this time, <laughs> it's personal. Um, we do thank you guys for your viewer questions. We would like more, so make sure to uh, give us those questions. Um, also, I just want to take a moment thank Rogue Intel. These guys are awesome. They're the ones who make this show possible, so make sure to check out their other shows at rogueintel.com. And a really great way to help out not only Rogue Intel, but us, is to go over to rogueintel.com slash Amazon for all of your shopping needs. If you're desperately trying to get a Nintendo Switch or some accessories, or games, check them out on Amazon because when you use this link, not only will you be getting the best prices available, but you will be help- helping out the Rogue Intel network. It doesn't cost you any extra, and a portion of your total will go towards the network. So make sure to do that, guys. We'd really appreciate that. Christian, you have anything else for us? I just want to tell everyone thank you so much for listening and watching our podcast, and if it wasn't for you, we'd just be talking to ourselves in a room. So until next time, you guys, the powerful Nerdcast is out.